previously on making over our dream home. <coughs> the heart of our home needed a temporary makeover until we have the budget to make some bigger changes. Oh man, this is awful. We spent months hunting down budget-friendly materials, painting and installing new floors, countertops, and more. The first door. That's about time. But while all of that was happening, there was another area of our home that was getting some love, the ensuite. It is official. Tomorrow we officially start roofing this bathroom apart. Our contractor and his team, they're coming tomorrow morning and we get to say goodbye to our multi shower. To be honest, I don't have a plan set in stone yet. I have a very good idea, a very good vision of most of the things that are happening in this bathroom. We have faucets ordered, we have a bathtub that we need to DIY, we've got a vanity, a toilet. The only thing that has not happened yet is tile. So this bathroom could go in two very different but very beautiful directions. I have not, have not figured that out yet, but either way, I am just so excited to start ripping it out and, and turning it into our dream bathroom. Goodbye, dirty orange oak cabinets. Goodbye, pink marble bathtub. <laughs> Goodbye, dirty, gross, moldy shower. It's still going. It's still going. <laughs> Goodbye, dirty, gross, moldy, floppy shower. <laughs> So this makeover is going to be just a wee bit different from past makeovers, which by the way, if you've missed past episodes of making over our dream home, I can leave that playlist linked in the description box for you. We ended up hiring a friend and contractor to do all of the dirty work for us this time. We do enjoy the process of renovating and being involved in the process and doing a lot of it ourselves, but we knew this bathroom was gonna be a bit more extravagant than past makeovers that we've done and things that needed to happen were just a little bit out of our comfort zone, so we decided to to leave it up to the professionals this time. So we ended up hiring our friend and contractor, Ryan Newfeld from Solid State Renovations to do the job for us. He's actually the one who did our floors for us like almost two years ago. He does such a good job. He really cares about what he does and puts a lot of love and effort into the work that he does and it shows. So let's take a look at the before of this bathroom. This home was built in 1995, which isn't old, it's pretty new, but it's dated. Nothing had been updated in it. It was left pretty much original when we moved in. So there were things that were starting to fall apart and things that just aesthetically weren't really my thing. I mean, some things were in pretty good condition still, but there were some things that just really needed repair, like this shower. This was filmed after I scrubbed the shower down to the best of my ability. Oh, and I should mention the crack between the jacuzzi tub and the glass shower wall that was so small that I couldn't reach my hand in there to clean it properly. You could see years of uh, dust and hair and buildup that was I just could, couldn't get to. Overall, the function and the layout of this bathroom was really good and we really kept it pretty much the same. Our only thing was we wanted a larger shower and the jacuzzi tub in the corner was taking up way too much space. We personally never used a jacuzzi tub. Honestly, I really didn't have a lot of complaints other than aesthetic and that moldy shower. <laughs> Today is the day. By the end of the day, this bathroom is gonna look completely different. It's gonna be ripped out, everything's coming out. They definitely tried to remove this mirror beforehand, but it was so glued and stuck on that there was no way it was coming off without just smashing it to pieces. I don't think Ryan minded that one very much. <laughs>
We definitely tried removing this tub as a whole with the mindset of donating it, but it wasn't coming out of that room, at least not easily, and so smashing it was, was the way. Originally we hadn't planned on removing all of the drywall, but because we needed to get behind the walls to move around electrical and plumbing, just starting from scratch was the easiest way. And I came up with a better idea later on that was far better than drywall anyway. because that's where the water for the sink was. That's where it comes from. It comes from that pipe. That's where the potty was. Oh. Yeah. And what's this? That's where the heat comes out of from the furnace. I told you Because that's where the pipes are for the bathtub. And that's where the pipes are, or the drain is for the shower. By the end of day two, the room was gutted to bare bones and it felt wild to see this place as it would have looked 26 years ago when it was first built. Now that demo was done, it was time to start building this place back up, starting with the foundation. This part was crucial in the overall function of the bathroom because we really wanted to have an open shower and in order for that to happen, we needed to make sure that all the water naturally flowed to the drain in the shower so it wouldn't just sit on the floor. And we needed to add just a little bit of extra reinforcement underneath the floor where the tub was gonna sit so that I would be able to properly support the 105 year old antique cloffet tub. been almost a full week since this started. The subfloor is officially put in and this corner is obviously where the shower is going to go. So this entire floor is going to slope to that drain. We're going to have a cloffet tub there, toilet, vanity, and last minute we decided to go with heated floors which is such a luxury for us. It actually wasn't that much more expensive to put heated floors in. We figured, you know what, we've gutted this thing to the ground. We might as well just go all out, spend an extra little bit of money and do heated floors. So I'm really excited about that. The next step was moving the pieces that I had sourced into the bathroom so we could start mapping out where all of the electrical and the plumbing would be, but we ran into an issue. In my head, it looked fantastic, but after we move these pieces in here, I realized this is just not right. This cabinet, I think is too low, and then butted up against this vanity, like the color tones of the wood, they don't match. It's too squishy. I was so excited about these pieces. Like we traveled far to get these pieces and it's just not working. So back to planning, back to marketplace. I, I'm not sure if they want me to talk at all, but I'm going to. Hi, Lucky's Life. I got all this membrane all down. Wow, it's not down. It's not installed yet. I just have it laid out, cut all the holes. I still have to put the thin set down. So you use like a polymer thin set to adhere this mat to the subfloor. You have to wet the subfloor with a sponge first, get all the dust up and make sure that the wood doesn't absorb the 
moisture out of the thin set too fast. Got all the holes cut around the shower base and then you silicone around that. Make sure that water doesn't seep back through that way. Got it around the toilet there. So we are ready to start mixing up some thin set and get this thing all poured. I'll time lapse it for you guys. They're just out doing some errands so I'm in charge of the camera. At this point, we took off on a vacation that we had planned a long time ago while still frantically trying to search for a vanity. But while we are gone, our contractor came by to start installing these shiplap walls. <laughs> you get that? Yeah. This was a design element that I thought of very last minute and it is probably one of my most favorite parts about the entire room. It added so much character and hominess. So, uh, a long time no see for me. <laughs> Some of these shiplap has been put up and patched. It is pine. It'll stand up to the moisture a lot better than the regular stuff would. So we have that up. The drywall in the shower has been put up and waterproofed. Our contractor's coming today to do a few more things. But the big thing I really wanted to update you on is this. We have officially found a vanity. It's even perfect because there's a spot for the sink to go in. Still have drawers on the side. There's a whole bunch of storage in here. I have been on the hunt for months for this vanity. I really, really wanted to go with something that was unique, that was antique, local, that was the perfect size for this space and that would work well to install a sink into was quite a challenge, but when I saw this, it was perfect. It matches with the wardrobe that's in her bedroom perfectly. The plumber needs to come and uh, hook things up according to the size of the vanity. And so without a vanity, we didn't know where to put like the plumbing. We didn't know where to do the electrical which is what Zach's gonna work on today. But now that we have that, we can measure it all out and we can install it and kind of get things going. That feels good. I'm wondering if we can get a piece of quartz or marble or something custom cut just for longevity because wood on a bathroom countertop probably isn't the best idea. We're just trying to envision kind of how this is gonna look and where is Zach's going to put the sconces. My goal with designing this bathroom was to keep everything very classy and traditional and to avoid trendy things as much as I could. So for example, we chose to avoid metals like gold that are maybe a little bit more trendy and went with more classy ones such as chrome, uh, oil rub bronze and brass. I tried to choose faucets and pieces that hopefully wouldn't look outdated in the next 26 years. We personally love this old timey style, this like cottage, English cottage type look. And I love that we took the time to source more antique pieces and unique pieces because it adds such a level of character to the space and to our home. Once we had the placements for the sconces and the pendant light mapped out, Zach went ahead and worked his magic. We've been waiting on this for a little while again. We've been waiting for the electrical to be inspected and approved. That's done now. So we can officially close up all of the walls and things can start happening again. So our contractor's coming. He's gonna be working on completing the shiplap. He's gonna be working on installing new windows. Room by room as we're renovating, we're gonna be replacing the windows as well just because they need to be replaced. So we're gonna replace them with windows that should hopefully last longer.
วฟายOption A, something a little bit more simple. Option B, something just a little bit more bold. We trimmed the ceiling very similar to what we did in the nursery and we trimmed the windows very similar to what we did in the kitchen. I love that we extended this ledge out a little bit, just adds that like old character home feel. And it's those little details that make such an impact on the final product. Next, it was time to dry fit the penny tile. Originally, I did wanna go with black and white, but then I saw this picture on Pinterest and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we did a penny tile like this all along the floor and then brought it up the shower wall so it would all flow together. Because my struggle with this room was trying to fit the modern open shower concept into a cottage bathroom. I actually went out and found my dream tile. It was beautiful, it was really expensive, but my contractor was able to get an insane deal on it and he was about to order it and we were so excited. And then we got news that it was really backed up and wasn't available and my heart sank <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I asked Zach what he wanted and he said he really wanted to go back to the traditional black and white design. He really liked that and so back to plan A it was. Today is the day that this tile officially gets installed. The last couple of days they have been working on getting the dry fit done. This is a very custom tile, very custom to this room. Um, so actually installing it has taken so even so getting it ready for installation has taken even just getting it ready for installation 
Hey guys, Ryan here with Solid State Renovations. Just giving you guys a little update on what we got going on here in this bathroom. We got the penny tile all laid out here, the heated mat underneath, and this is all waterproofed under the shower area. We did it way further back, so if there's any splash, that it drains back into this drain here. With this penny tile, it comes in a sheet with these black dots laid into it. Went over a plan with Delilah, actually, and she came up with this border design. And then we just changed it up a little bit so that it worked out symmetrical with the room. And so we inlaid these diamond pieces in there. You can kind of see that there's a heated wire under there. We're gonna skim coat that before we put the, the grooves down and lay this mat on top of there. The, it was looking a little bit too busy in this main area. So Zach had this good idea. So Zach and I really put our contractor to the test. To take out the black dots in the border around. And then we got a box of white, white dots that we're going to fill in. So this will all be white around here. It's kind of hard to see without them placed in there, but there you can see it's a little bit more full and it's going to look, look really nice, a nice like pattern in the center and then border around. And then with the shiplap on the walls, it came pretty rough. Something to do with building material now, it's coming really rough and crappy. So. We had Riley fill all the inconsistencies and it's like perfectly smooth, all nicely wood filled with wood filler that matches and then we're gonna paint this all. Got all the window trim on. So basically next week we're ready to paint this thing and get this grouted, put the shower wall tile on and get this glass ordered up and this place is wrapped up. Thank you Ryan for being such a good sport and putting up with us. <laughs> tile is officially installed. Now it's up to me to choose a grout color and a paint color. Got some, some grout colors, which I think is going to be an easy decision. It's the paint that I have been struggling with. I have been looking at so many different paint samples and just thinking and mulling it over and thinking some more. Finally landed on four different paint samples. This one is Seashell by Benjamin Moore. These are actually all Benjamin Moore. Grand Tetan White. Oh, I was going at Tetan. I'm pretty sure it's Tetan. <laughs> November Rain and French Canvas. The decision making process is not an easy one for me. It takes me a lot of time. I need to process things really slowly. I need to think about them forever. So you can imagine that trying to pick out a paint color and a grout color in one weekend was a little bit stressful for me, but we ended up going with the color French Canvas by Benjamin Moore. It's this beautiful, um, almost neutral, but it has a really beautiful green undertone. It's a very subtle green, very beautiful. And for grout, we ended up going with one called white, which was not actually a bright white. It was actually kind of an off-white, so I don't know why it was called white, but that is the color that we ended up going with. Can we just have a moment to appreciate the impact of paint in a space like this? It's not very often that I look at a paint color on the wall for the first time and fall in love. It usually has to you know, grow on me, it takes some time. But when I saw this, it was, it was love at first sight. It looks so beautiful, so much like what I originally had pictured for this space. And it matches beautifully with the colors that we already have in our home. Next, our contractor had to drill some holes into our beautiful antique sideboard in order to turn it into a vanity. Oh, baby. Wow. Like a glove. Like a glove. Beautiful. Wow. 
What are your thoughts? The color of the wall and everything together. So good. After that point, everything was put in place and ready for our plumber to come in and install the faucets and the sink and the toilet. I don't think I've ever been so excited for a toilet before, but this one is exceptional. Speaking of, I will leave some links in the description box for you, including this beautiful toilet and its beautiful accessories that we purchased for it. Now that most of the big things were done, we could finally start picking at some of the final finishing little details. Things like antique vents that we found secondhand and lights and crown molding. So nice and classy and nice. Do you mad if I broke this light? Oh mad. someone legitimately made this? Wow. Like a tablecloth. Oh, you love it. Yes. Hello. Welcome back. We uh, have not touched this room for a month. We're waiting on the tub to be professionally refinished. We're waiting on a glass wall. We're waiting on a countertop for the vanity. We're waiting on baseboards, plumbing. We're just we're waiting on a lot of different things. But our contractor was back today finished grouting the shower. It looks amazing. Zach has recently started to fiddle with the lights because the light fixtures finally came in. This is our over 100 year old beautiful antique cast iron tub. It is so nice. When she came home, she came home in like a blizzard, minus 40 gusting winds. And so a lot of her paint just kind of chipped off and faded away. So she needs some touch-ups. We were going to just paint it. We didn't think it was gonna be a big deal to do that ourselves, but apparently it's far more complicated than that because it's made out of cast iron. I don't know the details about it, but it's something that needs to be professionally done if you want it to last and be done properly. Thankfully, our plumber knows all about that stuff and let us know, and so we are getting it professionally refinished. We finally got it booked in. Zach is loading it up on the trailer tonight, taking it away tomorrow morning. Hopefully, we'll have a tub in our bathroom Room soon. All right, so glass is installed. Zach started to install the lights. He got one of them in. He had to do some DIYing to make it work, but it worked. But then we opened the other box and we found out that the shade of it was completely shattered. But I think it looks really pretty. The shape of it looks really nice next to that one. We still have to paint the crown molding of that one as well. We're waiting on the countertop still. No idea when that one's going to be done. Hopefully soon and then we can finish up all of this. We have the trim around the door, the architrave, everything that matches the rest of our home, uh, but we still need the baseboards to go around this room. And now we have a little bit of an issue with those. So the baseboards in our home are made of MDF, which is great, but not so great in a bathroom because MDF doesn't stand up well to things like moisture and humidity, which you will find lots of in a bathroom. So you wanna go with something like pine, like a solid wood. Now, unfortunately, we could not find the exact baseboard that we have throughout the rest of our house in pine. So we decided to go with something just a little bit different, but still very traditional. We went with a flat board, but to elevate it a little bit, we added a toe kick to the bottom. This one little detail of the toe kick added so much character and I love it. I failed to catch any footage of the process, but I did catch Zach's reaction. Hey, Zach hasn't seen the bathroom yet. Oh wow, that's nice. That's a little bit different, hey, but that's really nice. It looks so much more complete now. Is it painted? It is, but it should be dry. Yeah, like the like, detail at the bottom. Yeah, I'm so happy I decided to do oh, that. Oh, the grate looks awesome too. Doesn't it? Yeah. So it's, it's just screwed to the drywall then, hey? He didn't yeah, he kind of, he fixed up the edges of the drywall. He doesn't have much left to do. Building a custom shelf is going to be about that big to hold like some pretty things on top. And then we're going to put hooks underneath for towels. Ooh, nice. That's gonna be wow. so nice. That is nice. Nice. It's gonna be so good. It's almost done. Love it. Our tub is finally done. It's been sitting in a garage for the last week. Zach went and picked it up and 
the feet did fall off on its journey home, so we need to figure out a way to reattach those feet. But today is a big day because this guy is probably coming inside. They can manage to get it in. Our contractor is coming and he's going to be finishing up some of the loose ends and then we can get our plumber in and then it's basically done. The last look before the tub goes in. I think it was made for that spot. Right. Nice. Look! The countertop is done and it's beautiful. It's heavy. <laughs> Our contractor came by to install the countertop on the vanity, to install and paint the custom shelf that he made, and then pretty much everything else fell into my hands. Look at that shelf. It looks so good. Now we get to start working on the fun stuff. It is, aside from a few, we actually moved all of our stuff in here a little while ago and have been using the vanity area. We haven't been able to use the uh, the shower or the bathtub because, I mean, there's, there's no curtains yet. This is what the ladder looks like sitting on the toilet. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> originally I kind of thought here, but then we're gonna have towels hanging here. <laughs> Then I thought about putting it back here because we didn't really want to drill into this thing but then like to reach all the way back here to grab the toilet paper just... I don't think so. So we are drilling it into here as much as we didn't want to. We're trying to keep this as original and like untouched and uncut as possible but this is just going to be the best solution. Gently tuck. Oh, oh. oh my, look at you go. That's not a very nice one. Wow, so yeah. nice, honey. See? Wow. Could be an interior decorator. And then, if you really want to get fancy. Oh, wow. Wow. Didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> I've been waiting so long to put this thing up. This is beautiful. The most beautiful medicine cabinet I've ever seen in my life. <clears throat> so, center on the toilet. Right. Zach is just running to the store to grab some tools that he needs to hang up these hooks. But while he does that, I have gathered a few items that I have in my storage room that I've been just slowly collecting over the years for situations such as these. Hi. I've got some candle holders, I've got some various jars, I have a couple of picture frames, and I've got a couple of crocs. I'm going to just play around and see what I can do, try and make this all as practical and useful and beautiful as I can with what I have. Okay, the very last thing that I need to do in this bathroom is sew some curtains. The original plan was to go with cafe curtains, but because this is a bathroom, privacy is extremely important. Instead of doing cafe curtains, I'm gonna go ahead and do Roman shades. But I wanna do more of a soft, fluttery kind of Roman shade. This is my second ever sewing project. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants and hoping for the best. But I have this material that I thrifted a while back. It's just a white linen curtain, very basic, very simple. I measured it out and I have exactly the right amount of fabric. So here's to hoping I don't make any mistakes. I'm using a tutorial from YouTube from the DIY Mommy. I'll link it down below, except I'm going to make it less structured. So I'm not going to be using any wooden dowels. I'm going to just skip that step completely. Thimble and cloth. She doesn't have an official tutorial, but I was watching her story highlight on it, how she explained it. And so I'm going to do a cross between that and the YouTube tutorial. I will not be sharing a tutorial on this because I was just making up as I went along, but I will link below some of the general guidelines that I use to do this, as well as some of the materials that I purchased to make these. DIYing the curtains myself saved me hundreds of dollars and I learned a new skill along the way, hiccups and all. So I made a huge mistake. I didn't even realize it until I came in here yesterday after I sewed it all up. I'm gonna just, you know, see how it fits, see if I did it right. 
It's too short. I think the most frustrating thing is that it's short by just like two inches. I've been boggling my mind since yesterday trying to figure out what exactly to do here and I think I'm just gonna roll with it for now. I'm kind of on a time crunch. You'll never know when it's rolled up. I think it's so close. <laughs> you live and you learn, I guess. <laughs> I spent the rest of the night finishing up the second Roman shade and completing just a few finishing touches. Ladies and gentlemen, let us take a moment to remember where we started eight months ago. And I'm so excited to finally present to you our own suite. Stepping into this bathroom simultaneously feels like I'm stepping into a five-star hotel while also stepping into my dream cottage country bathroom. It has modern day luxuries while still feeling very characteristic and homey and beautiful. Removing that old jacuzzi tub really opened up so much space. And I so love all the beautiful antique pieces we managed to find for this place. It's everything I envisioned and more. And that brings us to the end of a very long journey. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. If you have missed past episodes, I encourage you to go and watch those. We have done the nursery. We have done our backyard patio. As we speak, we are working on finishing up the kitchen. We have plans to remake over the living room. The main bath is going to be completely gutted and redone this winter as well. And we're hoping to maybe tackle another room or two. So there is, there's a lot of fun home content coming your way. <sighs> Until next time. But it needs a little love when she came home from the hospital. <laughs> oh, there is a hornet. Oh, I wasn't ready.